<clears throat> Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Oh, okay. Um, I think you might be on mute. Could you check for me that you are not on mute? Sorry. I've just, just check on the bottom left side of the screen. There's a microphone. Check that it's not on mute. Hi. Good. Um, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Hi. Good. Uh, you sound a bit echoey. Um, is there anything on top of your microphone? Um... Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Same, same, same my connection isn't, isn't able. Okay, uh, could you maybe be able to find a spot where it's a bit more stable, please? We don't want you disconnecting during the interview, obviously. Uh, no, I think, I've, I think I've got it sorted. Yeah, no, it's sorted now. Yeah. Okay, well, amazing. Welcome to your interview with Caxton's. My name is Rodrigo, and I will be asking you a few lighthearted questions. We just want to get a sense of who you are and what you will bring to the company. Obviously, we don't expect much experience from such a junior position, but we are looking with someone. We're looking for someone with a drive. So, tell me about yourself. Um, well, I'm Sapphire. I studied creative writing for three years, and I graduated last year. Um, I had a bit of a blip, and I decided I wanted to do something a bit different. Um, and I was watching episodes of May the Best House Win. And uh, and. I thought, why not sell houses? That seems uh, fun. And um, it's a bit like writing, but out loud and to people. Right. And it pays better. And um, it seemed creative. You think so? Potentially. Right. Um, so what can you tell me about your knowledge of, you know, letting and selling of houses? Well, you have to persuade the people that it's going to be their home and it's right for them and help them to envision their future life there and, and their future. Yeah, we like to think at Caxons that it's more about making them realise that the property you're showing them is perfect for them. So it's not about finding a good fit. It's more about making them feel like they have a good fit. We want someone with persuasive language skills who is able to... I mean, I don't think upsell is the right word, but but definitely present the properties in a positive light. Do you think that's something you would be able to do? When you say upsell, don't you mean kind of being a bit dishonest about the No, company? no, 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 no. <laughs> never dishonest. No, it's not about, uh, we have a very, a very clear policy about never lying outright. But there's so many ways that the truth and uh, the realities can be adapted, really. We take pride in giving the information that the viewers need to know. Right. Are you confused? No, uh, no, it's just, I don't think I, I don't think I agree, actually. I think, I think the house should really be right for them. And uh, they should know all the things that are wrong with it, as well as the, the good parts. Um, because then they know what to fix and uh, I just think otherwise isn't it tricking them no no that's probably the wrong word um, yeah, I know it's sales thank you for bringing that up but um, I think you're missing the point entirely of what I'm trying to say here it's more about them being in front of a property they've already shown an interest in right and just making sure that they are observing the good things you would never say that the bathroom is a little small, for example, would you? You would just talk about how quaint the space feels instead of, I mean, <laughs> this is very straightforward stuff. Um, are you sure you're comfortable with this? Yes, uh, I've lived in loads of cool houses. I could um, use those to sort of talk about these and sell them. So, okay, if you had to focus on the good parts of somewhere you've lived before without mudding the waters, just could you do that? Just give me an example of a house you've lived in and sell it to me i can definitely talk about my uh student house from first year it had this really cool front door i mean it was pretty battered but it was our front door and i will and, stop you there oh. battered mm, it's not a word that we would use it's more about making it distinct you could say unique or retro this is a unique front door never refer to things as damaged or lacking in quality that would bring attention to the negatives Oh, yeah, I, I get that. I mean, it's the front door. I mean, if it's damaged, it's the first thing they'll see anyway. Remember, unique, not damaged. Got it? 
yeah, uh, right, right. So this, this house, I mean, walking that door had so many memories, like arguing with my housemates and slamming it and running out to tell a friend something and the way it would make the walls rattle in our yeah, house. Once again, let me just stop you. You seem to be very fixated on that door. Um, you've told me nothing about the living space. How big was it? How many rooms were there? Bathrooms? You know, the standard way of describing a house. Yeah, you're right. I, I am fixating. Sorry. Uh, it had three or four bedrooms. Five. Yeah, five bedrooms, two bathrooms, the kitchen basement. Quite big in the basement. Um, not super light. But I liked it, though. It was quite nice. Quite nice. <sighs> Well, not really. I mean, it was a bit dingy. The sink stank because my housemate shoved food down it, so it wasn't really a surprise. Dingy. Yeah, but that's kind of what I miss about it. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure I liked that about it at the time, but it's what made it my home. Not just a showroom and not just a, the, how it looks when you first move in and the fresh white paint smell. No, it was, it was what it was, and we could have made it into anything. We made it into a mess, but a family could have made it a lovely home. And isn't that what buying a house is about? About making it yours? Well, we certainly avoid talking conditionals, really. Our properties need to have fulfilled living potential. They are ready to be sold or bought. Just frame what is there in an excited kind of light if possible. Could you, could you do that, please? Just try that. Try that for your room, for example. My, my room? Um, my room? Oh... The room, it had, it had a bed. And, and it had tall ceilings and it had big windows and really nice views of the city out the windows. Um, it was okay. No, it was great. It was, it was great. It, it wasn't great though. It was pretty imperfect. It was it was weird and creaky and nothing was quite right. And sometimes I even thought it was haunted. Um, okay, never ever mention hauntings of any but, kind. But there were lots of weird tapping noises and pipes banging and the stains and the spills on the floors and the yeah, carpet was coming this up. This is the ridiculous. Floor. Sorry, Tahaya, I'm going to have to interrupt you right here. And then there was the mouldy shower and the smell of cigarettes everywhere and... Oh, you could hear everything because the walls were so thin. I mean, you could hear everything and you could especially hear everything at three in the morning when you were trying to sleep. But you could also hear the 1975 playing off from our basement kitchen and the lights were left on and most of them were flickering and there were piles of posts everywhere that weren't even outwards and wonky mirrors and, and the dead pots of plants at our front door. Unique pots of plants. I could use my cupboard as a fridge because our heating was broken. <laughs> and, and, and our front door didn't even shut properly. It, you could probably break in by tapping it if you wanted to. <sighs> but this is, this is kind of what I liked because none of it was perfect. And it made it feel like a home. And it felt like it had been lived in by other people and then lived in by us and that other people would live there after us. It's just a property, Sophia. Let's, let's just stop here, please. And, just and I miss that house more than anywhere else I've ever lived because it felt strangely alive. And it wasn't just a property, it was a home. Hello? Hello, can you still hear me? Am I on mute again? Have I, am I, am I on mute? Can you hear me? I really, I really miss it. I went there a few weeks ago in October and, and the lawn was still the same overgrown mess it always was and it looked tall and blue in the evening light and 
could see the stairs down to the basement and it looked warm and I wanted to go back inside. And someone turned the light on upstairs and I, I lingered. I lingered for a moment, wondering if they'd ask why I was there. No one did. So I left. It's their home now. To make more. It's their home now to make more memories than. Okay, um, I'm going to have to stop you there. Thank you for your time, Sophia. Um, we won't be taking this interview any further. I don't think you're quite what we had in mind for the job role. Thank you, I understand. Thank you for wanting to be part of our Caxton's family. Thank you for your time. <laughs> That's all right. I don't think I'm right for this job anyway. It's certainly a unique response to selling houses. Well, my point stands. Houses are unique and, and people are unique. Thank you, Rodrigo, and goodbye.